Even though they're nothing more than dead-eyed murder fish, people can't seem to get enough sharks. There's all sorts of media devoted to these monsters, whether it's the films about these bloodthirsty predators and their propensity to ride tornadoes, an entire week of television devoted to their killing sprees, or the many ballads sung in their honor. But one area where sharks haven't been adequately represented is video games. Oh sure, there's plenty of games where sharks make an appearance, but that usually ends with the player blasting them into shark chunks and turning them into morally questionable food or wallets because nothing says capitalism quite like pulling your Star Wars themed credit card out of the skin of an apex predator. Where's the respect? Where's the love? Where's the game that lets me devour large groups of people? And also, I have electric teeth for some reason. Killing Floor developer Tripwire has finally made the hyper-violent open-world shark game that shark lovers have been waiting for. However, while Maneater does give players a deep-sea adventure to sink their teeth into, there are a few areas where it can feel rather toothless. I'm Jamie Latour from The Gamer, and this is our review of Maneater. The story of Maneater is framed as a Deadliest Catch-style reality show starring a famous shark hunter by the name of Scaly Pete. This format allows SNL alumni and Rick and Morty voice actor Chris Parnell to serve as a narrator for both the fictional show and the game, which is perfect casting as no one is better at sounding both intelligent and insightful, yet vapid and shallow. The spring of 73 was a magical time in Port Clovis when local favorite Trash Talk placed 20th in the Derby and the city placed first in the country for petty theft. The game begins with your mother being horribly murdered. Like Bambi! You're then forced to fend for yourself in the wild without any parental figure around to guide you. Like Bambi! From that point forward, you declare revenge on every living creature, turning yourself into an impossibly overpowered uber shark that will become the bane and possible destruction of all of humanity. Like Bambi! The controls of Maneater are pretty easy to grasp. Eat something, smack things at your tail, swim fast, and flop about on land so you can devour all of the incredibly stupid humans. You build up your shark by gathering enough nutrients and mutagens from eating people and local sea life, as well as completing quests so your cute little carnivore can grow from a pup to an adult and beyond, and gain special evolutionary powers, such as the ability to survive on land or the aforementioned electric teeth. In fact, if you spec your shark right, you could turn him into a full on electro shark who could zap surrounding enemies and spin through the air like a lightning-powered whirling dervish. Because this is an open-world game, there's a large map to explore that includes plenty of collectibles to find and side missions to finish. Also because this is an open-world game, it features a main story campaign that's not particularly interesting. The missions in Maneater tend to feel pretty repetitive since there's only two real objectives, destroy something or eat a whole lot of something. Destroying a target can be fun since these are usually boss fights involving a bigger, tougher predator that requires you to get the hang of the combat mechanics. However, the missions where you have to eat a set number of easy to catch prey seems to take up most of the game and it can get pretty monotonous going from one quest asking you to eat 10 humans straight to another quest asking you to eat another 10 humans. That's right, this game made me sick of eating human flesh. I didn't even know that was possible! It's not always smooth sailing playing Maneater as the frame rate can become pretty unstable. When the action gets too intense, it can drop below 30 frames per second and start stuttering profusely. This can make the game a little difficult to play as it doesn't feel good to control when it's visibly struggling to keep up with the carnage on screen. Another thing that can make Maneater difficult to play is when it decides to delete your entire save file. Twice. It deleted my save file twice. See? Here's my save file. Now it's gone. Here's my save file. Now it's gone. I don't know if you can tell by the tone of my voice, but this was very irritating for me. Now, Tripwire has acknowledged this issue along with the assortment of other bugs and glitches and has promised that a future patch will iron out these problems. However, as someone who was forced to play through Maneater from the start, not once, not twice, but thrice, my experience with the game was not exactly the non-stop thrill ride I was hoping for. I won't deny that there's some mindless fun to be had by casually gobbling up everything you swim by and smashing into fishing boats to teach those puny humans a lesson. This is especially the case when you're a full-grown shark that can rip and tear boats and enemies apart like a torpedo with teeth. But even without taking into account the immense frustration I had with this game, Maneater has a few issues with repetitive gameplay and mission design, along with frame rate slowdown that bogs down the player's enjoyment. This may be a game about exploring deep waters, but after playing for a few hours, you'll find that it's actually rather shallow. <sighs> we were so close to having the Sharknado of video games, but instead we got the Sharknado 3, oh hell no of video games. Something that's bloody and inoffensive, but will stay in our memories about as long as our save files do. That's why we give Maneater three strangely sad looking dancing Super Bowl sharks out of five. 
Thanks for watching. To read our full review, visit our site at thegamer.com or click the link in the description below. And if you like our videos, why not leave a comment or subscribe to our channel? Go on, it'll make your shark papa proud.